I want to start things going by highlighting a couple of things that Forum said and bringing it into the map. And I'm going to, uh, you know, everything that Yoram said, you listened to, and you said, wow. But I'm going to explain how the wow actually had a bang. So there was bang for what he just said. Now, for instance, let's take the 2.7 versus the 1.7. What, how is that going to change something? Okay? Well, this is the key. As everyone here has seen, we have a topographic map. And I always thank Joseph. And I always start off, one of my things that I start off with is I talk about the water issue. And if you look at Judea and Samaria, and you just forget it's Judea and Samaria, and you just imagine a roof and water falling off the roof. That's exactly what's happening in Judea and Samaria. Water hits Western Samaria and goes to pre-67 Israel. So everybody a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, heard the German president of the EU said, oh, Israel is stealing or diverting the water. It's not true. The water actually goes to pre-67 Israel, and it's the Palestinians that are trying to steal and divert the water. But this is where those numbers, and this is where the work of this man has changed the landscape. What happened was, there was a certain amount of water that had been allocated to the Palestinians in Judea and Samaria. So, using the 2.7 million number, the amount of water that was allocated per Palestinian was less than an international norm. But because of this man's efforts, instead of the 2.7, <laughs> the 1.7 was used. And all of a sudden, there was more water than uh, the per capita. This is an unbelievable thing. This man has now, let me talk about a couple of other issues that this gentleman Great. He brought up what is an issue that eats away all of us. Why? Why do Israeli pilots and Israeli special forces, why are they always the most left-wing? Everybody here should ask themselves that. Okay? Now, I'm going to make it simple for everybody. I love Jewish people, but generally speaking, you know, Jewish people if their six walls are safe, unfortunately, they consider themselves safe. And when I say six walls, I mean one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So, the Israeli pilots and Israeli special forces. Let's talk about the pilots first. And this man will validate what I'm about to say. I had an intelligence officer one time come in with me after I showed my map. And he said, I've got a proof for you why everything you just said is totally false. I said, okay, lay it on me, babe. And he took his finger, put it on the map like this, and said to me, prove to me that that point is strategically important. And let me tell you the trick. I was a math man. And so what's the trick? The trick is you have enough points compacted, and all of a sudden, it's not a little point, it's actually something more than a point. So, he thinks he's just proved, since I can't point to any specific point on this map, and prove to him it's important, he's proved to me that none of the West Bank is important. So I say to him, okay, I've got a question for you, what point do you want me to prove to you is important? And he says, prove to me this point's important. So I said, okay. <coughs> I say, that point, that point right there? He says, yeah, so I take my little plexiglass piece. And I say, well, okay, you got that little point, right? Well, let's act like it's a laser, and it points up into the sky. That one little point, he says, okay. And I said, so, all right, we'll agree that that's now Palestinian airspace, right? He says, okay. Well, I said, all right. Now, if you are a fighter pilot, 
and your lieutenant is sending you out in your fighter jet, what does he have to tell you? He has to tell you, kind angle, when you have your plane zipping around the West Bank, be careful for that point. Because if you go through that point in space, you will, will have violated Palestinian airspace. And Hanan Ashrawi will go into the UN and say, those Israeli Zionists have violated Palestinian airspace. So then I said, I reversed the compactness argument on him. And I said, well, now you take those points. And you combine them into an airspace of the West Bank. Is the airspace of the West Bank strategic? He said, oh yes. And I said, don't all of the Israeli pilots said, oh, we can give up the land of the West Bank, but we can't give up the airspace of the West Bank. So these very pilots who are left-wing generally say, oh, we're going to keep the airspace of the West Bank, but say they can give up the land. Now, anybody who can explain to me a Palestinian state where Israel keeps the airspace but gets up the land is a little bit touched. Is that the uh, general? Okay. So now I'm going to talk about one more issue and then we'll break it up for questions. I love your manager. Now, let me tell you why I love your manager. Because first, he is an icebreaker in that he actually responds to what some of the Israel leaders argue. And they are and really if you take of all of the arguments, the most lethal to the right wing is generally considered the demographic argument. Oh, there's going to be more, there's going to be more. It's a Malthusian argument. It's going to be more, there's going to be more, there's going to be more than us, and we're going to be like that. Okay? So, just starting the argument is important. And let's sort of graphically understand what Warren was saying. If you look at this piece, and not as an airspace, but just as a curve, meaning the Palestinians are getting more over time, what the lefties say is, oh, they're going up like this, and they're going to outpace us. What Yoram is saying is, no, they're not going up like this. They're going at this rate, and at this rate, the Israelis are actually beating us, beating the Palestinians, and so the status quo is sustainable. I say a different issue. I was with a journalist, just to give you how entrenched people are. And everybody now knows my Katusha Raka argument, where this is the range of a rocket, and if they fire these from the Gaza Strip, and it's almost all barren land around it except for a couple of cities, but God forbid if they get Judea and Samaria, they'll be able to fire these rockets into New York City as opposed to North Dakota. And the other part of the equation is the uh, special forces will say, oh, we can reinvade the West Bank. They say, no problem, we'll reinvade the West Bank. So I say to Judith Miller, who for years was writing these articles on Israel, I say, Judith, I was giving her a presentation, I say, Judith, you can't separate the demographic argument from the Katusha rocket argument. And she looks at me and she says, oh, yes, you can. I said, oh, no, you can't. I said, she said why not? I said, well, I'll just, why not? And so I started with this piece, and let's talk about it. Your manager says it's about this much, the lefties say it's this much, but let's just take your managers or the CIA's numbers. When I say something is different, I say, what are they talking about with a Palestinian state? They are talking about the Palestinians having the power unlimited power to bring even 
if you talk to the left-wing Israelis who say they're not going to bring Palestinians in, into pre-67, they say they're going to bring in 5 million Palestinians into the West Bank. So what I say is if you take the status quo number and you say, well, maybe not 5 million, but even 1 million or 2 million, then not only do you have the status quo over time, you have an increase in population over the status quo base. Okay? So now, because they, it's, a, it's a country, the country is allowed to bring in immigrants, whatever they want. I voted an article a couple of weeks ago. One man's tourist is another man's terrorist. Okay? Meaning, can you imagine if Hamas got control of Judea and Samaria, and they brought in 747s uh, from Iran. Okay? They'd get automatic green cards if they killed the Jew. But be that as it may, the key point is why is the Katusha rocket argument inseparable from the demographic argument? The pro-right wing demographic argument. Because if you take what the Air Force pilots and the Special Forces men say when there's a Katusha rocket attack, meaning we'll reinvade the West Bank, then in three years, there will be, in a, in a Palestinian state, let's just say a million more Palestinians than there would have been under the status quo. So Israel's going to have to reinvade Judea and Samaria in three years' time with the extra million Palestinians. So in fact, what you need to do is not exactly worry about the demographic argument. You have to say, what is the likelihood that some Iranian-backed terrorist is going to be able to smuggle the same kind of small weapons that they're firing now from the Gaza Strip into Judea and Samaria, West Bank State? And all of a sudden, the demographic issue actually becomes a right wing issue. In that it only, if you think there's a problem with Muslim and Arab demography in Judea and Samaria now, just wait till they get a Palestinian state. Then you're going to have really a demographic problem. And so, with that, let's open it up for questions for Yoram. And everyone, oh, one more thing. There's going to be cake and cookies and more sushi and more drinks. So, coffee, coffee wants it. And everyone, I have to say, it gives me such nafis to have everyone here, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I, I look out and I see uh, just. 22, 23 years of uh, hard work and beautiful people. So, God bless you all. Well, God bless you.